Welcome, this is Africa in 10 Minutes. I'm Chamaka J. Uwadoka. Stay tuned as I bring you the top business news as reported on Footprint Africa. Let's take a look at the headline. Ghana's Unibank secures fresh $133 million capital injection. Kenya is ranked world-leading safari destination. SMEs to benefit from the African Development Bank's $100 million loan to Mauritius. And now the news in detail. Ghana's Unibank Bank has secured over 600 million Ghana CDs, that is $133 million, of fresh capital injection to position itself as one of the first banks to meet Ghana Central Bank's increased stated capital requirement. In a move that is expected to repose some much-needed confidence in local banks, the fresh capital coming from a financial consortium led by Belsa Capital, a project finance and implementation institution, according to the source, will see the bank's capital, including income surplus, reach almost 1 billion Ghana CDs, positioning it as one of the most dominant players in the market. Although Yeni Bank is substantially capitalized with a paid-up capital of 310 million Ghana CDs with an income surplus of some 52 million Ghana CDs, leaving just about 38 million Ghana CDs to meet the Bank of Ghana's threshold, the source noted that Yeni Bank wants to position itself as the industry's top local player, ready to help economic development. Since the central bank increased the stated capital of banks from 120 Ghana CDs to 400 million Ghana CDs, all but one of the local banks are in need of fresh capital injection, with some needing as much as 250 million Ghana CDs to stay in business or face universal banking license withdrawals. Moving on, Kenya has been voted the world's leading safari destination at the 2017 World Travel Awards for the third consecutive year. The country's president termed the win as a well-deserved accolade that speaks of the country's limitless tourism offerings and a moment of national pride for all Kenyans. Kenya received the accolade at a grand finale gala award ceremony in Vietnam. The World Travel Awards serve to acknowledge, reward and celebrate excellence across all sectors of the global travel and tourism industry. The event, which is the 24th edition of an annual series, comes at a time when Kenya's tourism ministry has been working round the clock to revitalize the sector, which had performed poorly in the past half decade. The country's tourism cabinet secretary, Najib Balala, has made recent moves to market the country, including making a highly publicized hike to Mount Kenya last month in a bid to promote the industry. Last month, President Uhuru Kenyatta directed that all Africans wishing to visit Kenya be issued with visas at various points of entry. Meanwhile, Balala stated that Kenya's international tourist arrivals between January and September this year have increased by more than 11% to 655,569 visitors compared to 589,958 in 2016. In other news, the governor of Lagos State in Nigeria, Akimumi Ambode, has called on the Central Bank of Nigeria to consider pegging the 220 billion Naira micro, small and medium enterprise intervention loan at 5% to encourage more offtake. Governor Ambade made the call while delivering his opening remark at the 9th Annual Bankers Committee Retreat, which held in Lagos with the theme Improving Financial Access, Enabling Job Creation and Driving Inclusive Growth in Nigeria. The governor's comments was a direct response to Sibian Governor Godwin Emefele, who had expressed disappointment that since creating the 220 billion Naira MSME fund in 2013, less than half of that amount has so far been accessed by the banks for their customers. Ambade said, we need the economy to grow at 7%, and we need to be creating at least 4 million jobs if we must cater for the growing rate of our population. The comments which drew applause from the participants at the retreat also saw Mrs. Bola Adeshola, the Chairman Subcommittee on Economic Development, Sustainability and Gender saying, We must remember that a sizable chunk of that 220 billion Naira is reserved for women and the failures we get from them is that they cannot survive with 9% so we need to bring it down to facilitate drawdown. Ambode also noted that all hands must be on deck to create more jobs for the people and ensure 6.7% annual growth rate. In Ghana, the Vice President Dr. Mahamadou Bawumia has said that the country requires about $600 million to achieve 100% electricity coverage across the country from its current 85% mark. According to him, the government has already put into play a number of measures to enable it to achieve this goal within the next three years, which will facilitate job creation and industrial development. Dr. Bawumia, who was speaking during a plenary session on private sector's role towards the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals at the African Roundtable discussion in Accra, explained that infrastructure development remains the building block that will propel the country's socio-economic development, which is in tandem with the SDGs. Vice President Bawumia said the private sector should be interested in the SDGs because successful implementation of the goals will create a stable business climate to work and ensure sustainability of their operations. 
He said a report by the Sustainable Development Commission of the UN indicated that there is about $12 trillion available for the private sector to access towards the implementation of the SDGs. Therefore, every country is supposed to build a strong foundation to achieve the SDGs, which requires those countries to have good investment climate with functioning regulatory bodies to facilitate the process, he said. He asked parties saying you must ensure inclusiveness in order to achieve the SDGs. For instance, in Ghana, we are prioritizing education to make sure everyone at least attains senior high education. What we want in Ghana is to ensure inclusion in everything we do in terms of formalizing the economy to facilitate job creation. And finally this week, thousands of small and medium enterprises in Mauritius will benefit from a $100 million loan to the country from the African Development Bank. The bank approved the loan through its public sector window to Mao Bank Holdings Limited in Mauritius to expand its SME business across sectors and foster private sector investments in a wide range of sectors such as manufacturing, trade, agriculture, aquaculture, ICT and transport. The facility will promote inclusive growth in the country. Through the support, Mao Bank projects an increase in its SME clients from 4,400 to 6,000, including 1,500 women and 300 youth enterprises by 2027. This will in turn allow the enterprises to expand their productive capacity, generate additional sales and ultimately grow their business operations as well as employment including for women and youth. Mao Bank Holdings Limited is wholly owned by the government of Mauritius which clearly commits to support Mao Bank to deliver its 10-year SME master plan launched in 2017. The master plan is aligned with the African Development Bank's High Fives agenda, particularly industrialized Africa. The master plan of the government of Mauritius aims to raise SME's contribution to the GDP from 40 to 52% by 2026, while increasing SME's share of national employment from 55 to 64%. There are over 100,000 registered SMEs in Mauritius, contributing approximately 40% of the GDP and employing over 280,000 people. These firms operate across a wide range of sectors, including food and beverages, textiles, furniture, paper products, chemicals, rubber and plastic, handicrafts, pottery, jewelry, trade and commerce. The African Development Bank loan will contribute to gender equity and social inclusion. Female workers and entrepreneurs will benefit from the bank's loan. So priority sectors of Mao Bank, such as agriculture, food processing, textile, handicrafts and service sectors, have high potential for female employment. With this, we conclude on this week's news. Please stay tuned for a recap of the story. Ghana's Unibank secures fresh $133 million capital injection. Kenya is ranked world's leading safari destination. SMEs to benefit from the African Development Bank's $100 million loan to Mauritius. In Nigeria, Lagos State and others urge the CBN to reduce interest rates to 5% to encourage MSME. Ghana requires $600 million to obtain 100% electricity coverage. Join the conversation on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and connect with us on LinkedIn. Stay updated with the trending business news in Africa. Log on to www.footprintafrica.com today. Footprint to Africa, business news made in Africa by Africans.